Hello, and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto. And this next month, the month of November, is Diabetes Awareness Month. And we are going to talk about some of the ways that diabetes can affect your feet if you, if you have diabetes. Uh, and we're going to start with a little case story of, of a patient of mine. I want to share this, this case of a, of a patient that came into the office. And this patient, she had uh, previous foot problems. And she had tried different types of diabetic insoles, and she ended up having a, a little bit of a problem. And we want to just let you know that this is going to be a little bit graphic, but it's used as a teaching example of what happened to her foot. So let's look at this first example here. You can see here, this is a picture of a patient's right foot. And if you look at the picture on the, on the left side, she has a blister on the, on the, underneath the big toe, and also on the tip of the third digit on the picture on the right. And this all happened because she had a new insole made for her shoe, one of those diabetic insoles. But it, it, either she had a callus that was too big or it rubbed a little bit too much. So we're gonna start talking a little bit about this patient to help you understand what can happen when you have diabetes. So first of all, the, the blistering that happened with this patient actually happened because she didn't have any sense of feeling on her feet, and we call this neuropathy. So she didn't have any feeling, and that's called diabetic neuropathy. That happens to people that have diabetes. It could even be for a short period of time, but when your diabetes is not controlled properly, it affects the nerves that go down to your feet. You start to lose feeling, and in this case, she didn't have any feeling. So these blisters that she had on her foot, she didn't feel. Another problem that this patient had is if you look at the picture on the right, she has, count the toes there. How many toes does she have? She has one, two, three, four toes. She already has one toe that's missing because she had had a previous amputation of the toe due to an infection. Whenever you have uh, an amputation of one toe, it's going to offset the balance of your foot and it's going to become a problem. And also, if you've had a previous wound or a previous amputation, it makes you to have great, greater risk of having a problem in the future. Okay, these are the kind of the two issues that this patient had when she came into the office, and we had to take care of it. The, the blister on the left hand had to be popped, and we removed some of the skin. And you can see there's nice, healthy skin under both of these. So you see the example before when she came into the office, and you also see the example after when she came into the office. And, and you can see it looks a nice red tissue here and red tissue on the tip. Nothing that looked infected. There was no redness. But you do see the insert that was made for her in a way that they tried to accommodate this area uh, underneath the big toe joint, right in this area. This has been a problem for a long, long time. And here you can see the second toe that's missing. This is considered a high-risk foot for someone that has diabetes. Not everyone that only has diabetes has to be scared of something like this. This doesn't normally happen. But if you've had diabetes for a number of years, and if you've had diabetes that's not controlled properly, a lot of these problems can happen. So today in commemoration of the Diabetes Awareness Month, we are going to do a quick review about some of the common problems that can happen if you have diabetes, and some of the common areas that you should be looking at with your feet. First of all, we're gonna talk about blood flow. Blood flow is the circulation that goes down to your feet, and the easiest thing to look at are the pulses on your foot. Your foot has a pulse on the top and on behind the ankle. So if you look at this picture right here, on the top of the foot and then behind the ankle, there are going to be pulses that, you can, that can be felt. And these are either called the dorsalis pedis pulse, which is the pulse uh, basically on the top, and the posterior tibial pulse, which is a pulse in the back of your ankle, on the inside of your ankle. You may be able to feel these if you have diabetes, and you may not. And one of the reasons you may not be able to feel it could be swelling, you can see the third item, or it could be because there's some clogging or some, some buildup into the arteries. That, that picture in the center of the screen, you can see there is a little bit of plaque buildup that can happen to some of the arteries in the foot. And this is especially common to people that have diabetes. Poor blood flow can be a problem because, for example, that patient that had that wound that we just looked at. If you have an open wound or a wound that needs to heal and you have poor pulses, it's gonna take longer time for that to heal and sometimes 
it can't heal. And that the pulses need to be looked at by a doctor, and there are certain types of exams that can, that can be done. One of the circulation studies, you can see the picture on the right-hand corner of the screen, is called an ankle brachial index. And we call that because we look at the ankle, and then we look at the arm pulse, which is the brachial pulse, and we compare the two. And normally they should be one-to-one, -one, uh, in terms of they should be the same pressure. If one area, for example, in your ankle is a lot less than your, than your arm, it shows that there's less blood flow in that area, and you may need to see a circulation doctor or a vascular surgeon for some type of a treatment. There are some other more involved exams. One of those exams is an MRI of the arteries. It's called an MRA, and there are some other, other ones where they can send little catheters to evaluate the arteries in the foot or in the ankle and also in the lower leg. Blood flow is very important for people with diabetes, and it tends to get worse over time. What do the, what do the standards stay, say for testing it? According to the American Diabetes Association, when you have diabetes and you're over the age of 50, that's when we start to do a yearly ankle brachial index. And if you don't have diabetes, we usually start looking at the age of 70. And these exams are very easy. They can be done in the office where you put three blood pressure cuffs along the, the leg and the, and the lower thigh, and it will do that evaluation. And if there's any problems or if there's a, a change year from year, then we could send you to see a, a vascular surgeon or a vascular specialist that can look at that. Another simple thing that you can do besides feeling the pulses is something called the capillary fill time you can see in that second item. And basically the capillary fill time is when you touch the tip of the toe, it turns white and then it turns red again. And then based on the amount of time that it takes to turn red again is the capillary fill time. If you have very poor circulation, many times that can take over five or 10 seconds, and that may indicate there is a problem. There are other indications of poor circulation as well, and one is called uh, claudication symptoms or, or, or rest pain. Those are two signs. Uh, claudication happens first, and then rest pain happens after. Claudication is cramping in the back of the calf or back of the thigh, and usually it's after a certain amount of exercise or a certain amount of walking. One of the typical stories we hear from patients is, you know, doctor, I can walk a block or two, and then after that, my, my calf starts to hurt, or my butt hurts, and I have to stop. And when I stop for a couple of minutes, when I rest, then I can go back to walk. And those would be signs of claudication. And then rest pain is that it's so bad when you elevate your feet and you're in bed resting, there's not enough blood flow going down to the feet, and then you start to have pain. Both of those are serious conditions that should be evaluated by your doctor to determine if you need to have any treatment. And many times, the, these types of circulatory problems can be undiagnosed. I'll give you an, a little example. If you have clogging in the arteries in the heart, that can lead to a heart attack. If you have clogging in the carotid artery, that can lead to a stroke. But if you have clogging of the arteries, which are the same arteries in your body in the lower legs, it's going to cause that claudication symptoms. And many times people don't even know to ask or to complain to their doctor if they're not able to walk a certain distance. And if you have some of those symptoms, you should, should ask your doctor or seek your podiatrist for some type of an evaluation, specifically if you have diabetes. Diabetes can greatly affect the blood flow. Blood flow is the first area that we want to look at if you have diabetes. The second area we want to look at is the skin that's on your foot. The skin would include the skin and the nails. Why is that so important? Well, like we saw in the picture of the, the first patient, there were blisters that formed, and you can see on the bottom right-hand corner, there's another patient that has a very big hole in their foot, and that's called an ulcer. Ulcers, once again, don't just happen. You're not gonna just develop an ulcer. It's usually a combination of having lack of sensation, and then a lot of pressure on the bottom of the foot. But let's start in terms of the skin. Let's look at the nails. What are some of the issues that can happen to the nails if you have diabetes or if you don't have diabetes? One of the problems, you can develop ingrown toenails. So toenails, instead of growing straight, they're going to be growing inward like this. And they could, they could get a, 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 an ingrown toenail with pain, with swelling around the nail edge. As a diabetic, if you have an ingrown toenail, you shouldn't just go to a pedicure and have it trimmed out. You should be seeing a professional. Many times, patients that have an ingrown toenail, they think it's an ingrown toenail, and they think it's from that, but it ends up being a problem of circulation. I can recall one patient that I treated, 
that he was treated for an ingrown toenail, and it wasn't an ingrown toenail. The, the pain on the side of the toe was because he didn't have enough circulation. He also had a little bit of an ingrown toenail, but because of the, the lack of circulation, he couldn't heal it. And that caused a problem that went on to lead to losing a part of his foot. And so if you have diabetes, an ingrown toenail isn't just an ingrown toenail. Another problem that can happen with diabetes would be a fungal or a thickened toenail or an injured toenail. You may, you may recall there's sometimes toenails that can get blood underneath them. Uh, sometimes you get that if you, if you drop something like on your hand, you can get that on your hand. You can also get it on your toenail or if your shoe is a little too tight. Specifically what I see with patients with diabetes is they may not know the actual size of their foot and they try to jam their foot in their shoe and it feels like it, it, feels like it fits, but it really doesn't because they don't have the circulation and that could create blood underneath the toenail and that could create other problems. So a blood blister under the toenail needs to be evaluated. And if you find a shoe that, that isn't the right size for you or it doesn't fit properly, I always say, please throw it away. Don't try to wear it another day. Don't try to stretch it out because it could become a, a big problem. We'll look next at calluses and corns. In, in many patients, they have a question, what's the difference between a callus and a corn? Basically, a callus is found in the bottom of your foot and a corn is found on the top of the toes or on the sides of the toes. That's the difference, but they're both the same. They're both a thickening of the skin on the, on the, on the foot because of rubbing, either rubbing on your shoe on the bottom, that sheer force, or rubbing between the toes or on the top of the toes from your shoes. Problem with calluses and corns in diabetics, once again, if you can't feel, it can get bigger and bigger and develop into an ulcer or a sore. The majority of ulcers or wounds that develop, like that picture on the right, start with a callus. You don't usually see an ulcer start without a callus first, unless someone's wearing a poor shoe, a poor fitting shoe, or doing a lot of walking. Calluses and corns need to be treated professionally. You shouldn't be taking a razor blade to your own foot. You shouldn't be cutting them down with your nail nipper. You should be having them trimmed professionally so that there's not any problems. Because if you go too deep, you could cause bleeding. And if you're not aware, you could, you could lead to a problem like an infection. The next area to look at in the skin is between the toes because there can be dampness that can develop there. That dampness can, be, can cause an athlete's foot or it can cause some type of an infection between the toes and that should be evaluated. If there's dampness, there are different things you can try. One of the easiest things to try as a patient is putting lamb's wool between your toes. So that, that's the lamb's wool you buy at the pharmacy. It usually comes in a big ball and you take a piece and you weave it between the toes. That can help dry out the toes. If that doesn't work, you may need to have an antifungal or some other type of a medication to clear up that, that dampness between the toes. It can be a problem because the dampness, if it's not treated, it can get a little cut. And that little cut many times can cause an infection. And if that infection goes between the toes, it can be a great problem. What you should be looking at are any signs of redness or swelling or what we call streaking on the foot. Basically, it's redness that streaks up your foot in an area that's considered an emergency, even if you don't feel anything. Once again, many people with diabetes, you're not gonna feel anything because of the neuropathy, but you're gonna start feeling sick, or you may have pain when you normally don't have pain. The best tip for a diabetic is to look at your feet every day. If you can't look at your feet, have a loved one look at your feet, use a mirror, use an iPad, use anything you can to look at your feet to make sure that there's no problem. And then the other area of the skin we would like to look at is athlete's foot. So athlete's foot, it goes alongside with, with a fungal toenail. They're both caused by fungus. That can cause some flaking on the bottom of the skin. Athlete's foot sometimes can cause some cracking in your skin, can cause a problem. It should be treated and you can either see your podiatrist or your dermatologist or your primary care to evaluate. The skin is very important because the skin on your foot is the barrier to getting an, an infection. In many people with diabetes, they start to have something called neuropathy. Neuropathy affects not only the skin because of the lack of sensation, but it also affects in the lack of sweating. So the sweat glands on your foot, if they're affected by neuropathy, you're not gonna have as much swelling, sweating, so your feet become much more dry and much more cracked, and that can be a problem if you have diabetes, okay? We're gonna go now to looking at the bone and, and pressure. So the bone deformities and high areas of pressure on the foot. 
I'd like to share a, a story of a patient of mine recently that came into the office. He had been a diabetic for a number of years. He actually lost one of his legs, so he only had one leg. And I've been seeing him for nail care for a number of years. And, and recently, he came in with a foot that was red, hot, and swollen. And the first thing, when you see a foot, if you have diabetes and you have, have had it for a number of years and you don't have the best feeling, it's red, hot, and swollen, the first thing you think about isn't an infection. The first thing you think about is something called charco foot. And that's the picture on the right-hand right -hand side of the screen there. The, the charco foot, what it is is where your foot collapses down. It breaks, and you don't know it. So you're walking on a broken foot, and then it continues to collapse down. And this is one of the most severe problems for those that have diabetes, and it's quite common. It's not usually common in the first few years, but if you've had it for a number of years, you may not even notice you injure your foot and it can start to break down. And when this patient, who only had one good leg, had developed a Charcot foot, we had to keep him off of his foot, basically either in a cast or on a knee roller, for about six months. Because you need that amount of time for the foot to heal in and to solidify. Because if he kept walking on it, the foot would continue to collapse the foot would continue to be problematic. And then you would develop these, these deformities of the bone, like you can see the picture on the right, where it's kind of collapsed out of position, and you'd actually have to shave off some of the bone or do a reconstruction surgery to fix that. That's the most severe. That was a patient that I had recently, and he's going to stay off his foot for six months, get fit for special shoes or a special boot called a pro boot, and he's going to be fine. But let's, look, let's talk about some of the other more common problems that we see for those that have diabetes. A bunion is a, a bump you can see in the picture in the center, a bump on the side of the big toe. That can be problematic because you could have rubbing on the shoe, and that may develop a big red bump. It could develop into an ulcer. Usually the biggest problem for those that have bunions are difficulty finding shoes. It, it's not a really big problem if, if it doesn't hurt you. And if you've had it for 20, 30 years, it's probably not the time to get it fixed unless it causes another problem. And one of the other problems that it can cause or it can contribute to would be a hammer toe. You can see the picture on the left-hand side. There's a, that toe that's curved up, and that's called a hammer toe. And the hammer toe is, is problematic because it rubs in the top, and many times it develops a sore on the top or an ulcer, a breakdown in the skin. First, it develops a callus, and if that callus gets too big, it can develop a wound. And, and both the bunion and the hammer toe can be treated with, with surgery or with uh, shoes. There are specific shoes that diabetics can wear and that are recommended. And there are other types of shoes that have kind of a stretchy material. I think it's kind of like a spandex that can help you if you have diabetes. So it's real important if you have any bony deformities to, to have them evaluated. And then finally, uh, equinus. Equinus comes from, from equine, from a horse. So having a, a tight heel cord is something called equinus. And if you have a tight heel cord, if you can imagine if your heel cord is tight, it's going to push down your foot more as your heel cord gets tight, and that's going to put more pressure onto the front of the foot. And there are many problems, such as increased callusing in the front of the foot or difficulty walking, other things that can happen. People that have diabetes, they tend to have a lot more thickening in their Achilles, in their other joints, in their capsules due to the diabetes that can make it more challenging for them to walk because of their, their, their foot issues. And it's, it's important if you have an Aquinas, you may not even know, you should be checked by your doctor, but it just makes you more, kind of more rigid when you walk, and it could cause pressure to change and, and put pressure on one place or another. But bony, bony deformities or problems with your feet can make finding shoes difficult, both if you have diabetes or not, but specifically if you have diabetes, it can cause other problems. For example, that, that patient that we looked at in the beginning, she was wearing a, a diabetic shoe with an insert but it still caused those problems because if the insert isn't fit perfectly or if the insert gets a little bit old, it can cause increased blistering. And not only that, if you maybe have something that's feeling great and you typically walk two or three blocks, and then all of a sudden you have to walk a mile, that increased amount of walking can be problematic and can lead to blistering and other types of problems if you have diabetes. The next area we want to look at is a feeling evaluation or an evaluation for neuropathy. Neuropathy, we've been talking all along with diabetes because neuropathy is one of the biggest culprits to having problems with diabetes. To, to keep it simple, you have nerves that come from your spinal cord 
and they go all around your body. You have nerves that go to your, your fingers, you have nerves that go to your face, you have nerves that go down to your legs. What happens is over time, if you have increased amounts of sugar in your blood or, or diabetes due to the blood sugar, and also you have an, poor blood flow down to that area, the nerves can eventually die because of the increased sugar or because of the lack of circulation and all, a lot more complex discussion we can have. But to keep it simple, they just start to lose uh, their ability to transmit uh, feeling sensations. And also, like I talked about, they're transmitting even the sweating to make the, the, the glands sweat. And this be, can become a problem because it can, it can lead to you stepping on something and not knowing it. You could, I've heard stories of uh, grandparents, for example, that they go to their grandchild house and they put maybe Legos in their shoes and they don't know it. There's one specific story of a patient of mine who liked to golf. And one day he came back from a round of golf and his foot was all bloody and blistered and he didn't know why. It was, it was because the last time he had put a sock in the front of his shoe and he didn't know it. So those simple things, those simple mistakes, when you're a diabetic, you don't have any room for mistakes like that. And it can become very problematic if you have uh, this, these conditions of neuropathy. The device that we use, you can see the picture on the right, is called a Sims Weinstein. And this is, this is a, it's a monofilament, a little piece of plastic that you push on different areas. And this should be done at least yearly by your doctor to determine if you have feeling or if you, if you do not. You, another one that's even a little bit more sensitive would be vibration. So you take a tuning fork and you put it on the big toe, if you can feel that or not, would show the amount or the severity of the neuropathy. It's beyond our discussion here about what treatments you can have to help with the pain. There is painful neuropathy. And then there's non-painful neuropathy. And, and actually, the, the non-painful neuropathy is more of a problem because if you don't have any pain at all, it can develop into an ulcer or a wound very, very easily. The painful neuropathy, that can be treated with medication to take care of the pain, but the ultimate uh, control is to reduce your blood sugars as much as you can to, to keep this under control so you're not going to have more nerve damage. And the importance of, of the gift of pain, pain is really a gift. And if you don't have this feeling of pain, it can cause a lot of problems on your foot, like the blisters that we saw in the beginning. Could, it makes it slow to heal because even though you have a blister, you're, you keep walking on it because it doesn't, doesn't hurt you. You don't have any feeling there, and it can become uh, very problematic. And we want to go over some of the recommendations for you if you do have diabetes. Uh, first is to look at your feet daily. There's a lot of different ways to look at your feet. You can have a loved one look at your feet. You can, have, you can use a mirror. You can use, like I said, some technology like your phone to take a video and look at it. It's very important to look at your feet or have someone look at your feet for you to make sure there's no problems, no cuts. What are you going to look for? Well, any signs of redness, any blisters, any cuts, any pro anything that's out of the ordinary. And then you should bring that to your doctor, go to your doctor. A lot of people say, well, I go to my doctor every three months. Well, you, you still should look at your, your feet every day. Kind of like a diabetic checks their blood sugar every day uh, multiple times, you should be checking your feet. I recommend patients over the age of 50 have circulation studies or ankle brachial index, and that's something you can ask your primary care doctor or your podiatrist to do for you. If you have diabetes, you could get diabetic shoes. Uh, they're usually covered by most insurance plans. You have to talk to your doctor to determine what are the risk factors or what are the reasons. But most people that have neuropathy, a callus, some type of a foot deformity, and most people have those that have diabetes, you can qualify for diabetic shoes. Some people that are very, very healthy, they don't qualify for them, but it's something important. And then diabetic foot care. Uh, at a minimum, everyone that has diabetes should be seen by a podiatrist once a year. You should also be seen by an eye doctor once a year, no matter what, just for an evaluation. And then based on the symptoms, if you have poor blood flow or if you have neuropathy or have difficulty doing your nails or calluses, then you would see that person with more frequency depending on that. And then finally, I want to leave this for you. It's, it's basically a diabetic foot checklist that I recommend for my patients. And I just want to go over this. And this is something that you could go over with your doctor when you see them. And you can take this. You can, you can print this off. It's pretty easy. First of all, for the checklist, first of all, imaging in any studies that you should get. Basically, an x-ray, I think, is, is warranted if you have a foot deformity. If you have an open wound that's been open for a long time, an MRI many times is indicated to verify that you don't have any bone infection, something that we do very frequently. And then an ultrasound at times can be used to evaluate if there's a soft tissue issue or an area that you're concerned with. Biopsies many times are done on diabetics and non-diabetics if there's an area that may be a wound that's not healing because wounds can sometimes change into some type of a skin cancer. 
also different types of dots and specks and, and freckles and moles or that can look like cancer, you should be biopsying those for an evaluation. So anything that looks abnormal, it would be good to look at. Uh, the next thing would be to look at the blood flow and swelling. If you have a lot of swelling, uh, compression stockings are indicated for you. Uh, this can open up holes in the skin that can be problematic. A vascular consult is very important. That would be seeing a vascular surgeon. Vascular studies like we talked about in ankle brachial index, that's indicated for you. And then finally, uh, any, any skin issues like nails or calluses, that could be a problem. An ingrown nail, that would be a problem, or a wound. If you have a wound, you shouldn't just try to treat that on your own. You should be seeing someone about that wound for an evaluation to see what the problem is with that wound. Uh, reducing pressure is very important. That can be done with an orthotic, one of those inserts that goes into your shoes, or some type of a pad. That would be around the area of callusing or an area that is at risk of developing an ulcer. And also a feeling evaluation would be a Sims Weinstein, something to evaluate your feeling on your foot is very important. That should be done at least once a year. There are some medications that can be used. And then blood sugar and nutrition. We didn't really go into this too much, but those that have diabetes, you should be seen by your doctor or an endocrinologist. And then possibly a nutritionist for evaluation and how to naturally reduce your blood sugar, reduce your weight, and other things that can contribute. And finally, the recommendations that I give for my people with, with diabetes is to look at your feet daily. Uh, this, there's nothing more important than that. If you can't see, have someone else look at it. And then diabetic shoes can be helpful. Many of my patients say, you know, doctor, diabetic shoes look ugly. And I had one of my mentors that said early on, he said, well, what looks worse, a diabetic shoe or, or no foot? You know, something that could lead to an amputation, if you could prevent that with a proper shoe. Not everyone needs them, but those that need them, they can be very, very helpful. So these are just a few reminders. If you have diabetes, you should be seeing someone that, that would treat your diabetes looking at your feet. Many times diabetics, they remember to go see the eye doctor. They see their endocrinologist. They see these other specialists. And they usually wait to get their feet examined until there's a problem. But many times when you look at the, the feet, when there's a problem, it's, it's already too late. And it's something that could have been avoided earlier on. So I hope this is helpful for you. Thank you very much. Hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're going to find a few links here I'd like you to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.